Hello students. Today we shall discuss about sugar derivatives. Several important compounds are derived from monosaccharides through a variety of chemical and enzymatic reactions. So these compounds are called as sugar derivatives. Example for such sugar derivatives are sugar acids, sugar alcohols, deoxy sugars, amino sugars, and sugar esters. How do we get sugar acids? Monosaccharides upon oxidation, we will get sugar acids. Okay, uh, this oxidation involves oxidation of carbonyl carbon, oxidation of uh, last carbon that is primary alcoholic group, or else oxidation of carbonyl carbon as well as last carbon. So we get different types of acids based upon which carbon atom is oxidized. Here you can see a glucose when it is oxidized at C1 that is first carbon carbonyl carbon we will get aldonic acid okay when it is oxidized at C6 we get uronic acid and when both the carbons are oxidized C1 as well as C6 when both these carbons are oxidized we will get aldaric acid in the case of glucose when c1 is oxidized we get gluconic acid when c6 is oxidized we will get glucuronic acid and when both c1 and c6 are oxidized we get glucaric acid glucaric acid is always called as saccharic acid so here you can see how the first carbon is oxidized whereby you get a gluconic acid okay glucose you already know it is an aldose it is made up of six carbons when the first carbon that is carbonyl carbon is oxidized CHO group is converted to COOH group so we get gluconic acid the suffix OSE is changed as onic acid okay so from glucose we get gluconic acid then uronic acid how do you get uronic acid glucose upon oxidation of c6 in sixth position we already have ch2oh that is primary alcoholic group when this primary alcoholic group is oxidized what we get is called as glucuronic acid okay so glucose upon oxidation of sixth carbon we get glucuronic acid what is the importance of glucuronic acid? Uh, from uh, glucuronic acid, we get UDP glucuronic acid. UDP glucuronic acid is the active form of glucuronic acid. And this UDP glucuronic acid, it uh, involves in conjugation reaction. It participates in the conjugation of bilirubin. So bilirubin is a bile pigment and bilirubin occurs as bilirubin monoglucuronide and bilirubin diglucuronide conjugated forms for that conjugation of bilirubin this uh, udp glucuronic acid plays a significant role not only that this glucuronic acid also involves the conjugation of steroids thereby it helps the elimination of steroids okay apart from that it also take parts in conjugation reaction which involves the conjugation of various drugs so that the drugs are made highly water soluble and thereby they can be easily excreted from our body this type of reaction is called as detoxification okay so uh, the glucuronic acid it involves in detoxification of many drugs and glucuronic acid also involves in the synthesis of glycosaminoglycans how do you get this glucuronic acid when glucose is oxidized at a sixth carbon we get glucuronic acid and when c1 as well as c6 both carbons are oxidized what we get glucaric acid okay first carbon carbonyl carbon sixth carbon primary alcoholic group when c1 and c6 both carbons are oxidized uh, we get a dicarboxylic acid which is called as glucaric acid in the case of glucose we get glucaric acid the other name of glucaric acid is saccharic acid 
The second sugar derivative is sugar alcohol. Monosaccharides upon oxidation yield acids and monosaccharides when they are reduced it yields alcohol. Okay. These alcohols are called as aldetols. Here the carbonyl group is reduced to alcoholic group. When glucose is reduced, the CHO group is converted to CH2OH. Okay. The CHO group is converted to another primary alcoholic group and this is called as glucetol. The other name of glucetol is sorbitol. Since it is an alcohol, it ends with OL. Okay. So, when glucose is reduced, we get sorbitol or glucetol. When fructose is reduced, in that case also you will get sorbitol. When mannose is reduced, we will get mannitol. Okay. When xylose is reduced, we get xylitol. And from ribose, we get ribitol and myoinositol. This is also a reduction product of glucose. And this myoinositol, it is an important uh, chemical messenger in our body. It involves in uh, regulation of hormonal activities. It acts as a second messenger. And from glyceraldehyde, we get glycerol. Okay. So, we get sugar alcohols by means of reduction reaction. Then, the next sugar derivative is deoxy sugar. When one or more hydroxyl groups, OH groups are replaced by hydrogen atoms, we get deoxy sugar. In the case of ribose, when the second OH group, the OH group attached to second carbon is replaced with hydrogen, we get deoxy ribose. And you already know the significance of deoxy ribose. It is an important constituent of DNA, genetic material, nucleic acid. Okay. So, other such deoxy sugars are fucose, ramnose, etc. Uh, these deoxy sugars are integral part of glycoproteins and glycolipids. Then, next category is amino sugar. Here, amino group is attached at second carbon. Okay. So, in glucose, if amino group is attached at second carbon, we get glucosamine. Glucosamine. If amino group is attached to galactose, we get galactosamine. Okay. And these amino groups, they have the capacity to accept an acetyl group. Okay. Amino groups, they react with acetic acid. That way we get acetyl derivatives. So, from glucosamine, we get N-acetyl glucosamine. Here you can look at the structure. CH3CONH. Okay. Already NH2 group was there. Now that NH2 group reacted with acetic acid so that we got N-acetyl glucosamine. Uh, similarly, when muramic acid, muramic acid is acetylated, we get N-acetyl muramic acid. N-acetyl muramic acid. And these N-acetyl glucosamine, N-acetyl muramic acid are important constituent of bacterial cell wall. Then sugar esters. When alcohol reacts with acid, the resulting product is an ester. Okay. Here in the case of monosaccharides, monosaccharides are having OH group. Okay. These OH groups, these alcoholic OH groups, when they react with acid COOH group, it results in the formation of ester. When glucose reacts with phosphoric acid, we get glucose 1-phosphate or glucose 6-phosphate like that. And fructose, fructose yields fructose 6-phosphate, fructose 1-6-bisphosphate and this is the structure of uh, ATP, adenosine triphosphate. Okay, this is the energy currency of the cell. This is the structure of adenine, structure of ribose. Here three phosphate groups are attached. Adenosine triphosphate. Glucose 1 phosphate and glucose 6 phosphate are positional isomers. Here the difference occurs in the attachment of the phosphate group. Here phosphate group is attached at first position. Whereas here the phosphate group is attached at sixth position. Glucose 1 phosphate, it is an important 
it plays an important role in glycogen metabolism and glucose 6 phosphate it is also the starting material for many important metabolic reactions and fructose 6 phosphate is converted to fructose 16 bisphosphate okay fructose 16 bisphosphate when the phosphate group is attached to same carbon two phosphate groups are attached to same carbon then in that case it is called as diphosphate when the two phosphate groups are attached to different carbon then it is bisphosphate okay Uh, this reaction takes place in glycolysis that is breakdown of sugar breakdown of glucose in that glycolytic pathway fructose 6 phosphate is converted to fructose 16 bisphosphate so these are the examples of sugar derivatives so in the sugar derivative series we discussed about sugar acids so based on the carbon atom oxidized we get different types of acids like uh, aldonic acid or uronic acid or aldaric acid and upon reduction we get sugar alcohol then when oh group is replaced with the hydrogen atom we get deoxy sugars and when oh group is replaced with amino group we get amino sugars and when the alcoholic oh groups present in uh, sugar reacts with acid we get sugar esters so these are the important sugar derivatives that's all about today's class let us meet again with another interesting topic in the next class thank you